Hi guys, Fred from AF Math and Engineering. And we just finished solving for the centroid of the I-beam and now we're gonna find the moment of inertia. So let's begin. Uh, we, we did do a little bit of moment of inertia stuff in our strengths one videos. So uh, link on the screen, if you wanna go check those out, uh, just click on the screen, go back and refresh your memory because I won't be explaining this in too much depth. Okay, so we remember the, the parallel axis theorem, okay? The parallel, parallel axis theorem states that for any object or any shape in the cross section that isn't going directly, whose own centroid is not going through the centroid of the entire cross section, you need to apply the parallel axis theorem. What that means is that you're essentially, you're taking a moment of inertia that's not on the x-axis and you're translating it to the x-axis, okay? Simply put. So, let me write this down for you. Okay, we have base times height to the third power over 12 plus a dy squared, okay? So this is called the parallel Okay, we have the parallel axis theorem, okay? And because our shape isn't symmetrical and because every shape here, or every part of the cross section is not passing through the x-axis or its centroid isn't passing through the x-axis, we're gonna need to apply this to every shape in the cross section. I, I know that explanation maybe sounds a little bit weird and convoluted, but I, I think you'll understand once we start to solve a problem or two. Okay, so let's begin. Um, where should we start? Let's start with section one. Okay, so section one, we have the base, which is 200 millimeters. Okay, we'll start with that. Okay, times the height cubed. The height is 40 millimeters divided by 12. Okay. What's the area? 8,000 just as we found over here. And what's dy, okay? So dy is the distance from the centroid of the shape, which is at 20 millimeters from the datum, to the neutral axis, okay? So we found what, uh, what the neutral axis is, or the distance from the neutral axis to the top, and it was 113.33 millimeters. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead, and we're just gonna subtract 20 from that, okay? And so that will give us this distance here which is 93.33 millimeters, okay? And uh, when you guys, when you're doing your test, it, it, I, I'm drawing a little bit small because I wanna fit it into the page, but you know, use your paper, make a nice big diagram, and, and write in these distances that you're calculating as you go, and, and make sure that there, you know, there's, an, there's a line connecting them because that's gonna help you uh, solve the problem in, in a much more efficient way. You're not gonna have to recalculate values and waste your time. Uh, it just helps, trust me. Try, give it a try when you're practicing. So, our dy for this section one, okay, is 93.33 millimeters, and we're gonna square that, okay? So this, I'm just gonna put this in square brackets, just to show you, and I'm going to give that a number one, okay? Uh, referring to section one, just so we can follow along. Okay, next, section two. So. This one's a little trickier, okay? The centroid of section one, okay, is 100 millimeters from the bottom of this uh, flange here to the, the center of the, the web, okay? So that's 100 millimeters, all right? So this requires a little bit of practice, but if you do a few problems, you'll get it. So the distance, right, from the center of this shape to the top of the beam is 100 plus 40. So we have 140 millimeters, right? Simple enough, okay? Now the distance from the center of this shape here, okay, to the neutral axis, all right, which is 113.33 is simply 140 minus 113.33. And that's gonna be our dy, all right? And I just, I just showed that to you because that's the, the trickiest part. The rest of this equation is just plugging in numbers, okay? So I know I did this a little bit backwards, but we're just gonna put the dy first, okay? 
So let's start with the eye. We have a base here of 30 millimeters, okay? Times a height of 200 millimeters cubed over 12. Okay, that's our moment of inertia. And now we apply the parallel axis theorem. We already did the dy, we explained that before. We go over here to the area, it's 6,000, okay? And it's as simple as that. That's our second section done. Now let's just finish up the third one quickly. All right, we have 40 as the height. We're gonna cube that times 100, which is the base divided by 12. We have the area, which is 4,000 millimeters squared. And what's our dy here? Well, we have 166.67 millimeters from the bottom of the beam to the NA, right? We, we drew that in because we knew it would help us and it, now it is. And we just need to subtract 20 to get to the centroid of section three and that distance to the neutral axis, okay? So that is 146.67 millimeters, that's squared. Okay, and that's section three. Now all we need to do to complete this, get the moment of inertia about the x-axis, is we just need to calculate that. And it ends up being, there we go. So, uh, sorry, I hope that's clear. All right, so that is our moment of inertia. And uh, yeah, well, uh, next video, we're going to see how to apply this moment of inertia to uh, calculate the flexural stresses in the beam.